students from St. Lawrence University on this virtual Laurentian weekend. My name is Aaron Todd and I'm the Assistant Athletic Director for Communications and Marketing here at St. Lawrence. It's a Saturday in October in Canton, New York, and in most years, that would mean we'd be looking forward to a homecoming football game on Lake Leckenby Stadium. Unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we're unable to host people on campus this fall and we're not playing football, but we'd like to take this time to look back at one of the great teams in St. Lawrence history, the 1982 football team. And I'm so happy to have three St. Lawrence legends joining us for a panel discussion about that season today. First, I'm going to introduce the team's running back. He ran for 1,350 yards that season, which remains a school record. Now, the managing director and national sales executive of Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, number 41, Keith Henry. Keith, thanks for joining us today. Hey, good to be here. All right. Our next guest was the quarterback that season, and he's now the head football coach at Villanova University, number 15, Mark Ferranti. Mark, I know you miss being on the sidelines just as much as we miss uh, St. Lawrence football uh, with Villanova canceling its season as well. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today. Oh, no problem, Aaron. Appreciate you setting this up. This is awesome. And uh, our final panelist today was the head football coach that season. He coached at St. Lawrence for five years. And he went on to be the head coach at Villanova for 32 years. He was the AFCA Coach of the Year, won the Eddie Robinson Award, led the Wildcats to an NCAA mm -hmm. Division I championship in 2009, and will be inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame of Dece in December of this year, Coach Andy Talley. Coach, congratulations, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, it's a pleasure, Aaron. Couldn't uh, couldn't be happier to be with you and uh, all these great players that helped my coaching career along very well. Believe me, especially uh, Mark Ferrani because he joined me at Villanova, uh, and now so great to see an SLU guy as the head coach at Villanova as well. Absolutely, certainly a special connection between the three of you and so many members of that team. Um, I want to start, Coach, with you. Just if you could talk a little bit about your expectations heading into that 1982 season. The prior year, the team was five and four. Offense averaged a little less than 20 points a game, um, but you had some weapons coming back. Can you talk about what your expectations were? Well, actually, I really assumed that that football team would be uh, a terrific team. Uh, I knew it was important to get by Ithaca because, uh, you know, they were, you know, one of the great teams in the country uh, and we opened up with them, but I felt if we could somehow get by that first one, um, we had really good leadership. I only had uh, eight or nine seniors on that team, but yeah. they had worked real hard with me and struggled as we put this whole program together. Uh, and they were very unified. So we had strong, real strong leadership uh, and we had some guys on the rise in the program uh, that we felt uh, really could be special. One of them was uh, Keith Henry. And of course, you know, Keith went on uh, to All-American status and had an incredible uh, rushing season and was also uh, an inspirational leader. So uh, at St. Lawrence back in that time, uh, a lot of the coaches were part-time and some of the uh, full-time assistant coaches were head coaches in other sports. Um, so they weren't, you know, as dug in uh, as, as a football coach as I was. So, you know, it was 24-7 for me. Uh, I was really committed uh, to getting this program to be one of the top programs in the country. And that's what we actually ended up being. Um, and and uh, after that particular season, uh, the following year, we were ranked – number one in the country in preseason. Uh, we didn't live up to that expectation, uh, but um, that just gives you an idea of where the program went. Mark, as one of the seniors on that team, um, you know, how, what was your sense going into the year? Well, it was, um, you know, we, we came out of the year before, and as Coach said, we were pretty excited about a lot of the guys on the team that we had coming back, not only in our small senior class, but guys like Keith and those type of things. Um, Coach, can I share the story that you and I had in in the spring and in the summer prior to that season? Well, that that will show them what an idiot I was as a coach. <laughs> uh, 
I, I don't know how many people know this. And I, Keith, I don't know if you know this, but Coach pulled me in prior to that season and uh, asked if I would consider going to safety and play defense because, you know, we had this 6'5 quarterback who could throw it a heck of a lot better than me, much yeah. better, much better <laughs> athlete than me, Bill Stone. And uh, I, I ended up playing those last couple games of the year before, and I, I was hoping to, you know, come back and be the starter in the 82 season, the starting quarterback. And then Coach and Joe Kimball, our defense coordinator at the time, said, hey, Mark, why don't we split time, play some safety, play some quarterback, and, you know, we'll see what happens. And uh, we got into preseason camp. I didn't go to safety at all. I didn't go over and work any defensive drills. And Coach and I talked after that, and Coach said, I, I thought we were going to maybe split time. And I'm like, Coach, I I'm not going to do that. I I'm going to stay, and I'm going to compete at quarterback. And if I'm the starting quarterback, then so be it. If not, so be it. But uh, I worked my butt off that 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 preseason. Yeah. And then that summer, I, I never stayed. I never really was big into the weight room. Weights weren't what they were back in the early 80s as they are today. and uh, But I stayed up there that summer prior to that final year and worked out with guys like Ed Zott and, yeah. you know, some of the big guys that were up there in the summer. And we were real excited about the team we had coming back. Um, but, you know, the expectations, cautiously optimistic, but not knowing what we would be like. And as Coach just stated, that first – game against Ithaca, um, which I'm sure we'll talk about here in a minute, was really, I think, the, the tipping point that gave us the confidence we needed in ourselves to, yeah. you know, go from there. It, it was a great – I don't know if we opened up with someone else other than Ithaca, if we would have had the same reaction, but having not beaten Ithaca, Ithaca in our careers there, and uh, I think the last time St. Lawrence beat them was 76, um, I think that just propelled us and gave us the confidence we needed not only in ourselves but in each other to, uh, you know, progress from there into the season. Well, let's talk a little bit about that Ithaca game. Um, you know, Keith, going into that season, as you mentioned, um, five straight losses to, to Ithaca, as you mentioned, Mark. <laughs> and, 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 you know, the, your first two experiences against Ithaca, Keith, they weren't, they weren't even really close games. Like, let's be honest. I think they were uh, – you know, 45, 14 or something, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. You know, Ithaca really had had your number. So, so um, you know, I know you want to have a lot of confidence going in, but was there any doubt in your mind going into that game where, you know, they'd really handled you um, the, the first the first couple couple times that you've seen them in your career? Yeah, Aaron, first of all, thank you. And it's great to be here with Coach and Mark. Um, yeah, actually, uh, there was a lot of doubt, but it actually started before the game that I walked into the game. The, 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 if I had to summarize it and looking back, it was a, um, a season of serendipity because we weren't sure how good we really were. In fact, I came into the season, the preseason, as the number two running back, number two B-back, fullback, uh, behind an extraordinary young man, uh, Ken Moon, who, who was just extraordinary. Um, and then, you know, he went down in preseason on an injury and I got called up. Coach felt that I could do it. He didn't have any doubts because he knew that I worked hard. But we weren't really sure. So we walked into that season not sure of how it was going to go. And then I remember coming out and, and coach, we ran a sprint out offense and Mark came back and ran right green, left um, sprint out and right green. We went down the field, boom, boom. And it was amazing. We didn't score, but we went, we, we, we knew we could move the ball. At the end of the day, we went into the halftime tied 14, 14. And that, in and of itself was a victory because normally we would go in the half down against Ithaca. And coach gave a speech, and I remember it vividly as if it was, you know, yesterday. He, he said, listen, we're in this game. Let's not beat ourselves and have and meet adversity with tenacity. That was his words. And we came out, and, and I remember breaking off to the left tackle. We ran a T4 trap where I hugged a double team, and I popped out. And I got a picture of it where I kind of shook the uh, – the cornerback, and I broke it off to the outside, to the left uh, sideline, picked up maybe 20 yards. And Weeksville went crazy. I mean, I remember it was like maybe – it was – I mean, it, the, the fans went crazy because we could move the ball. At that point, I knew we could win. And it was just a matter of just staying focused. And Mark was magical. Uh, we picked up a couple more first downs. And then Coach Tally had this play called the power right. 
and we were inside the red zone, maybe inside the five yard line, uh, whatever it was, where I was the lead blocking back, and we had Leland Rogers and Bennett Steens in there. And and I remember coming out on the outside, and I did, a, and I was pretty good at blocking. But I cracked this guy, and I blocked him, and I just knew it was it, Katie barred the door. It was over, and uh, Leland walked in, the, walked into the end zone, and at that point. We just kept scoring and scoring. Next thing you know, fast forward and scores 45-14. St. Lawrence wins, beat Ithaca for the first time in, in many years. So it was, a, it was a great, great game. But more than that, it was great confidence to build, as Mark said. And Coach Talley, can you talk about that momentum coming out of halftime? You know, can you feel it on the sidelines in a game like that where, you know, it's tight and then things start going your way and then, and then everything changes? And it's like it goes from being a tie game, you guys ended up winning 45-14 to 14 in that game. <laughs> yeah, well, the, sec the second half, uh, we had a better feel uh, in terms of what we could do offensively. Uh, you know, we went into the game knowing Ithaca was, you know, one of the great teams in the country, uh, and it, it would be hard. But then once I had a feel, uh, that was back in the day when I actually called plays uh, and had a, had a scheme in my mind that we could, uh, we could run it. And Mark uh, Ferrani was – was really magical uh, as, as a quarterback. Um, we ran a lot of option where he would read uh, whether he would give the ball to Keith or whether he would pull the ball and run it or pitch. And uh, a lot of times Mark had both uh, the opportunity to give the ball to Keith and pitch the ball but he would take it and run it himself. And I go, oh, man, hand the ball off. Oh, good play, Mark. And he'd run for like 15 yards. Um, but he was, he was really, uh, you know, magical uh, running, running that option offense. Uh, and they really didn't have a way to defend him because they didn't know what he was going to do. And I didn't know what he was going to do because two or three times I said, hand the ball off. And, you know, he'd pull it and run it himself. Um, so – you know, he was he was the straw that stirred the drink, so to speak. No doubt. Uh, and, you know, as we go back to that uh, ridiculous thought process where I wanted to move him to defense, uh, you know, I really, uh, that would have been a real blunder because he was the key. Uh, you, you know, today even, Mark knows this well as a coach, if you don't have a quarterback, you're in trouble. Uh, I don't care uh, what kind of talent you have. And, uh, you know, we had a quarterback. Uh, that not only could run what we were doing, but he was always, a, you know, also a great leader. And if you look at Keith Henry, you know, the same way. I mean, Keith uh, was a great leader. We had a, we didn't have a lot of seniors, but we had some leadership on that team that was real strong. That's excellent. Um, so after the Ithaca game, you guys go on to win your next three, uh, you know, including a close one against Alfred, 17 to 12. So you're four and zero. Go into the bye week 4-0. I'm sure you guys are feeling great. Um, and then after the bye week, uh, you go to Norwich. And one of the more uh, probably back and forth crazy games that you'll ever yeah. see. Um, talk a little bit about that game, Mark, and, and kind of what was the flow of that game? What do you remember from that? Yeah, what I remember in that game, and, and it was crazy. We, we jumped out on them pretty good early, and, and then we let them back in the game. Yeah, I threw a few interceptions. We had a couple turnovers, and um, you know they're always a tough group to play. You know they have that military background, so they're going to just keep punching and punching and keep coming after you. So um, I remember the ending the most, or the latter part of the game the most, because like I said, we jumped up on them. They kept coming back. They actually took the lead. Then we had to go down and take the lead. Um, as we were talking prior to getting on this call here. We were up 39 to 32, and I remember we needed to get a two-point conversion to go up by those seven points um, just to make sure we had the opportunity to, you know, make it a, a touchdown, an extra point game, a one-score game. And then they went down the field and scored and it made it 39-38 with very little time on the clock. And um, their coach, I can't remember who their head coach was at the time, but uh, was it Coach Minter, Coach Talley? Do you Barry Minter. Yeah, there you go. And um, they went for two to try to win the game instead of yeah. kicking. And, uh, you know, we didn't have overtime back then, I don't believe. So I think instead of playing for the tie, they played for the win. And um, we stopped their two-point conversion. We were able to hold off and uh, win the game. So one of those back-and-forth 
you know, jump on them quick. They come fighting back. They actually take the lead. We have to fight back. And then, um, you know, we hold, we hold on for the win. And when you have a season like we did in 82, those are the games that are going to make the difference between the previous season, a five and four record, or the season we had in 82. And uh, that was definitely a memorable one and a hard fought battle for sure. Keith, what's that do for, you know, the, the attitude of a team when you have a game like that that's close and then you, you manage to pull it out in a crazy yeah. ending and, and, you know, maintain that, maintain that perfect record? What's that do for you on the way home? What's that do for practices the following week? What was the attitude of the team like? Yeah, so that game was the tipping point because that's game five, right? And we win that game and then we go in the back half of the season and we've already played Ithaca, we played Norwich Academy, and then we got a couple teams that we know we can, we should win those games. So the attitude is now one of real confidence. I used the word earlier, serendipity, but we know there's also a little luck in there. I, and I give Coach T and Mark a lot of credit because we felt, at least from an offense standpoint, that we could score at any time. But we had the ability to score because Coach was an offensive genius. Like really, he was running plays way ahead of his time in terms of offense. And Mark and Coach called it the Veer option. Today, that's called the RPO run pass option. And Mark had so many, he was so versatile that, you know, he can give the ball off, he can, he can keep it a pull and run himself, he can even throw. And so we knew we could score. Winning that game, though, was by one point, and it came down to the wire, you know, it felt like it was like we saw our, our future flash in front of us. We knew we could be great. The bus ride home, I think we all slept because we were exhausted. <laughs> and, 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 and I think Coach gave us Monday off because it was just one of those games where you left everything on the field. And, uh, but, it, but it really gave us that tipping point, that edge to move into the second half of the season with complete confidence, because I think the, the last four games, we didn't score less than 40 points in, in the last, in the back half of the season, which was extraordinary. Uh, Coach, can you talk about that, you know, have, about that offense? You guys averaged more than 33 points a game that season, and, and what did it do for you to have uh, a quarterback like Mark and a running back like Keith, you know? So, you know, obviously Mark was, uh, could throw the ball. He also, you know, could, could push the ball on the ground as well, but then to have an option like Keith on the ground to, to have all those weapons at your disposal. Well, you know, we, we were uh, an unusual team during that uh, time in college football because we had the ability to run the option. Uh, we also had power football in the package. And Mark had developed as a passer uh, yeah. as well. And yeah. we were more a drop back or a sprint out team uh, play action team than we were drop back and we put a little bit of drop back in the game but he he was not really a drop back quarterback he was really uh you know a sprint out uh option quarterback which made him a dual threat so you know i got smart and started using my brain a little bit um that you know that was where we were going to make our money with him and he was also a very tough customer um, you know, Mark had run a wishbone in high school. So, you know, he was, uh, he was a rough, tough quarterback. He was as tough as any running back we had for sure. Uh, and when you have a guy that brings that kind of energy and toughness, uh, to the game, it exudes, uh, and, 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 and players play off of, of his toughness. So, um, you know, the option offense was what we were going to run, and uh, he had done a great job in the offseason, as he mentioned, working on his arm, throwing the ball. And he ended up with, uh, I don't know, 24 or 2,500 yards of passing offense, and I think still holds the record at, at St. Lawrence for throwing the ball in a single season. So um, that gives you an idea of the kind of work ethic that he had and what he put into it uh, to be able to. Um, you know, throw the ball. So when you defended Villa, and when you, you defended uh, St. Lawrence at the time, you had to stop the run and the pass. Uh, and that's what made that team, you know, very special. Absolutely. Um, so you, you run out the regular season as Keith, as you mentioned, you know, uh, had four more games. You finished nine and zero for a perfect, for a perfect mark to end the regular season and you earn a spot in the NCAA tournament. 
uh, you're facing Wagner in the quarterfinal round. And, uh, you know, once again, you guys saw some adversity. Uh, they raced out to a 34 to 13 win or 34 to 13 lead. I believe it was in the fourth quarter. Um, you know, what happened in that game? And, and you know, Coach, yeah. just kind of talk about what, what, you know, what, what the early stages were like and what you were thinking on the sidelines. Coach Talley, why don't we start with you? Well, you know, the uh, team was coached by one of my very best friends. Uh, and, uh, you know, he actually was a grad assistant for me, Walt Hamline. Uh, who's now the athletic director at Wagner, but Walt at that time uh, was a GA for me when I was coaching at Brown. Uh, and so I knew him very well uh, and we had watched their team and they were the number one team in the country at that time. Uh, they were undefeated and uh, had some really awesome players. Uh, so I kind of knew him pretty well. Uh, I, I knew uh, their schemes very well. Uh, and I think what happened to them is with the 34 to 13 lead uh, deep into the fourth quarter, they started popping champagne uh, in their in their box. Uh, literally, their coaching staff popped the corks and they were drinking champagne in a press box. Meanwhile, you know, we were trying to figure out how we were going to get back in the game. Uh, and as I recall, and Mark and Keith can help me, but I think the turning point, uh, Rod Vessling, our kicker, he kicked a 52 or 53 yard field goal uh, to get us yeah. right. I think either a, we tied the game with that field goal and that just turned us completely around. Like, you know, we, we can beat these guys. Uh, and we went on and uh, ended up, uh, you know, probably the best comeback of my career. Mark maybe can remember a couple we had at Villanova, but um, and that was an incredible, incredible comeback against uh a, a team that was as good as us or maybe better. I um, mean, they were really good. Uh, a lot of speed, a lot of talent. Um, but that game was sensational win for us. And we flew down on an airplane and, you know, the St. Lawrence kids have never really been on an airplane. I don't think. And, and no. uh, uh, not, not too many air, airplane flights, you know, and it was cool. Uh, it was, it was just a, a great win. And, you know, we felt, you know, we just beat the number one team in the country. We, we, we could go on and beat anybody, really. Mark, talk about the, the kind of momentum swing there. Um, right. just, just to do it that quickly, you know, with that little time to, to go from, you know, down 21 to, to up by nine, like a 30, 30 to zero run to finish the game. Right. Um, real quick, though, Aaron, let, let me just, I know we skimmed over those last four games, but that Norwich game, I think Keith ran for over 160 yards. And then two weeks later against RPI, he ran for, he set the school single game record at like 215, 217, something like that. And then the very next game after that, he went for 229 or 230. So he broke the record like two consecutive weeks. Yeah. And, yeah. and then we, we went into the, and, I, and again, I'll get back to the Wagner game here in a minute, but the Cortland game was so big because we were 8-0 uh, at the time, going into yeah. the final home game, um, you know, senior day. We didn't have a lot of seniors, as Coach said. And I remember Coach saying this to us in the locker room pregame, going into that Cortland game, you know, because we're shooting for the 9-0 and perfect season. And uh, he had on the, on, the, on the blackboard yeah. four quarters to play, the rest of your life yeah. to remember. Yeah. And um, I used that. Well after that season, I used it when I was coaching as an assistant coach, when we had games like that, getting ready to play guys. And, um, you know, that run we had at the end behind Keith's rushing attack and, you know, Bennett Steens and, and all the guys. So um, I just wanted to mention that because, you know, I know we can't go through game by game the whole season. We'd be on here for hours. But, you know, the way <laughs> Keith the ball was awesome and, you know, coach is very kind in his description of me because coming out of wishbone offense, I couldn't pass the ball very well at all. <laughs> um, so, you know, thankfully, coach didn't ask me to be a drop back passer because that would not have worked for, for my style of game. The sprint out game and everything that coach, you know, implemented was awesome. And coach loves throwing the ball. I mean, 
and yeah. Alley is where he really wanted to go by. But we had a great mix. The balance was unbelievable. And Coach put together awesome game plans week in and week out. And the outside veer um, option game that Coach had us run came a little easier slash natural to me from being a wishbone quarterback in high school. So I was able to make those reads. And, you know, believe me, I was looking to give it to Keith or pitch it to guys like Bennett because they're <laughs> a lot more athletic and faster than I was. So if I would get 15 yards on a carry, they probably would have got 50. But I would get caught by D linemen and tackle uh, linebackers regularly. But it was a great um, offense for us at the time. And, you know, the, the implementation of the passing game that Coach put was um, really, really balanced. Our, the balance we had was incredible. You know, I think we probably ran for, um, I don't know how many total yards we had that year, but I think it was really balanced in both categories. Um, now, fast forward to the Wagner game. You know, they were really good. They had a running back, Alonzo Patterson. We had a great running back, Keith Henry. So in the pregame articles that you saw, you know, they were comparing the two. You know, uh, Keith in our system was classified as a fullback. The B back, as Keith said. So, you know, Alonzo Patterson is that faster tailback. So, um, you know, you had great comparisons there. Um, and they got up on us. They got up on us early. And as Coach mentioned, I think we were down 34 to 13. Yeah. Um, either right at the end of the third quarter or maybe even heading into the beginning of the fourth quarter. Yeah. And we fought back. And the tipping point, momentum-wise, was that field goal. Uh, I happened to be the holder at the time. So pregame, Rod Vessling, our kicker, and myself and our snapper, we go out and we, you know, you're going to practice in, in the pregame. And Rod was booming them. He was kicking them <laughs> in pregame. And we were at that point in the game where it's fourth and whatever it was, fourth and long. I do remember. Um, we went for a couple other fourth downs in the game and didn't get it. And so we're at that sticking point again. Do we try a third time or do we just try the field goal? And Rod, we're on the sideline. Rod just walks up to coach and I as we're deciding or coach is deciding really what we're going to do. And I'm waiting to go back on as the holder or go back on the field with the offense. And Rod goes, coach, I can make it. And just the tone of it. I don't know, Coach. You tell me. Was it the tone of his voice? Was it the fact that – I mean, and, and Coach looked at me, and I'm like, Coach, he was, he was cranking them in, pre, in pregame. And uh, Coach made the decision, and we went out and kicked the field goal, and that just was the tipping point. That was definitely the tipping point of the momentum. We ended up putting another one on the board uh, with an option play, pitched it out. I think Leland Rogers went 30 yards for the final touchdown. And we ended up winning the game 43-34. And that, that was just unbelievable. But it, it was, like Coach said, I, I, I know we had some comebacks in all the years Coach and I spent together at Villanova. But um, this one is as memorable as anyone I can think about. Keith, can you um, – yeah. what, what was it like? You know, obviously, you know, you played some great games at Weeks Field. Uh, what's it like to go on the road, take a plane trip down to Wagner, have the crowd, I'm sure, going nuts when they're up big, and you guys silence them at the end? That must have felt amazing. Yeah, so Co Coach T was right. So here it is, the first NCAA game we play. And normally St. Lawrence football, D3, we travel in style in a bus from, from, from Hamlet to Hamlet to wherever we play. This time we take a, um, a flight into New York City, LaGuardia with a chartered bus taking us to Staten Island. It was first class. So we felt like champions um, just on the experience. And we got in the game, and I, 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 and then there I was. Uh, I remember taking a knee. We were down like, I don't know, about two or three touchdowns. And I remember the halftime speech, and, and Coach, he didn't look worried, but there was a concern. It was like, wow. I mean, we, you know, we, there was an acknowledgement that we've made it this far. But, you know, maybe we've kind of gone beyond our talent. And there was two or three plays that I remember vividly that I'll never forget that, to me, changed the momentum, trajectory. And, and I could say changed the, the trajectory of my life because what I learned in that game was never, ever, ever give up. 34-13, 
10 minutes to go in the game and there's no chance we're going to win. But there's a couple other things. One, it was the Saturday before Thanksgiving. And so New York City has a lot of St. Lawrence alums. So we had more people at that game than we still. So they stuck with us. So that's number one. Number two, um, Mark ran the beer option and he, you know, he'd ride and read me right into the line, right into the line, right into the line, right into the line. And he just kept riding me. And next thing you know, he pulled maybe, maybe 10 yards down the field and the ref blew the play dead. It was like, because he was so good and, and no one knew who had the ball. So we came back and Mark gets, doesn't get the credit that he deserves for, for you know, he's not a uh, seven step, 10 step drop core that can throw it a hundred yards, but he knows how to throw. So I remember he was third and forever. And he throws the ball right on no, a no, 30, 40 yard pass, right down in the middle of the, uh, of, of, of the defense. And Larry Schaefer catches this pass. And it was like a David Tyree kind of pass, you know, going into that Super Bowl, like back of his head. It was an unbelievable catch. And we're going crazy. And next thing you know, we're already tied 34-34 with that kick with Vesling for 52 yards. Now we go ahead. And right there in that moment, we knew not only we could win, but we were destined for, for a special place. And so I think about that game. And, and, and I look back at it, we never gave up. And it was the total um, symbolism of what, what team really means. Because there was no one standout player. There was no one play that I can remember that other than Rod Vesling. It was a total team effort. And if you go through football, you, sometimes it takes all 11, all 22 players, plus the, uh, the kicking game. And that was when it came together to make that, that season special. Yeah. Well, that's, that's incredible. Um, well, Coach Talley, you know, after winning that game, you guys faced another tough test, Augustana, NCAA semifinals. Um, that game went right down to the end. Uh, I know they had a 7-0 lead late in the game, and, um, you know, you guys were driving. Can you just – we don't want to touch on this one quite as much because it didn't work out quite as well, but just talk about what happened at the end of that game and, and uh, you know, how close you were to making it to the NCAA championship. You know, I, I will, if, if I could take just a, a moment, I wanted to mention two players uh, that are no longer with us uh, that were part of that great yeah. team. One is Andy Gambardella, uh, who was a big offensive lineman uh, from West Haven, Connecticut. Uh, Andy, unfortunately, uh, w was hit by a car in downtown Canton. Uh, and, you know, very sad to lose a, a teammate like that. Okay. And then we just lost Craig Johnson, uh, who was a wide receiver for us from Governor, local kid. Uh, yeah. And uh, CJ uh, was a coach for me, with me and Mark at Villanova. Uh, he unfortunately passed away in the last few months here. So um, yeah, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention uh, those yeah. those guys that were, you know, a big part of, of what we did. Um, but uh, with regards to the Augustana game, uh, one, of the, one of the first things that I do remember uh, is it was freezing cold. Uh, it might have been 10 degrees uh, and, you know, windy, uh, which, which was fine with us. Field was, was pretty frozen. Um, but we, we were schemed up to play. Um, you know, what is not mentioned in the, in the footnotes to that game is that Mark uh, really was hurt the week before. And it was uh, very questionable if he would play. Uh, so you take your, you know, your featured QB uh, out of the game like that and, and you're really going to struggle. Uh, but, but he decided to play. Uh, with no practice. He didn't practice at all the whole week. Um, and, you know, he, we had to commit to a ground game. Uh, and, and it was also, you know, against, you know, a very excellent football team in Augustana. Probably uh, with him uh, doing, uh, being in, in, in the best health, we, we probably would have beat them uh, because our defense stepped up that day. Uh, and played really well. I mean, we held them to one touchdown. Uh, we're going in to tie the game toward the end of the game. Uh, I think we're on the one or two yard line and I called a sprint out pass. Uh, and their kids stepped in front of the out route 
and picked it off and went like, I don't know, 98 yards uh, to yeah. make it 15. Uh, oh. to not, the score would have been 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, yeah. I don't even remember how much time there was in the game, but it, it would have been a, a little bit of a different game uh, had he not had that pick. Um, so, I mean, Mark, Mark played, um, you know, with no practice, which, which no player does. I mean, later on in my career, you know, at Villanova, we would never play a player. Uh, who had not practiced at least uh, one or two days. We kind of instituted that um, because it, it's just, it's very difficult uh, yeah. when you have no practice, especially to play at an elite level uh, where, where we were playing. Uh, so uh, I remember uh, getting back on the bus and, you know, coming back home. And it was really sad because uh, we had had such a phenomenal season uh, and then to lose that game where, you know, you really could have projected yourself into the national uh, championship game. So uh, it, it was, to say the least, you know, a very bitter loss. But then you have to put all that aside and take a look and, and say, wow, this is really the greatest football team that St. Lawrence University ever had. Uh, and... Uh, with a break here and there. And we certainly had our share of breaks during that season. Uh, it just wasn't meant to be. Uh, and and um, once you get over the loss, you look back and go, wow. You know, we had several of the players, including Mark and Keith, become All-Americans. Uh, and, uh, you know, ECAC Player of the Year. Mark was ECAC Player of the Year. We were the uh, ECAC Team of the Year. We won the Lambert Trophy, um, you know. So I mean, this this is an elite team in the East and in the country. So those are the things that you go back and you look, uh, and when you put the loss away and look at the total scheme of what that team accomplished, um, you know, certainly in the Hall of Fame at St. Lawrence and one of the great Division Three teams in the country all time. So um, you know, I was very fortunate to uh, to be the head coach of that team. Uh, Mark, Keith, and, and Coach Talley, you touched on it a little bit already. You know, what did you take away from that experience of being a member of that team, being a leader on that team? The team, um, as Coach said, you know, the, the bonds, the, the friendships, the closeness, the relationships, um, that's what gets you through those great seasons. You know, yes, we had a lot of talented guys. Um, you know, maybe some not as known as some others. Keith ha had a phenomenal career pretty much throughout. But as you heard early on in this, you know, Ken Moonen was also there. And, you know, if, if Ken didn't get hurt, you know, maybe Keith wasn't able to propel himself into the season he had. But um, the experiences you have when you have a season like that and, and the bond and the, and the chemistry, whatever you call it, you know, the chemistry, the relationships, the, the brotherhood, it's just, we're just a great group. Of, it was just a great group of guys, and, and we got along. It didn't matter what class you were in. Leland Rogers, freshman, I think he, he may have led us in touchdowns that year. I know he, he did, freshman. yeah. I know he broke a freshman record touch. Keith would do all the work, get the ball down the field. <laughs> We'd get inside the five-yard line. I think, I think in Leland's first six or seven touchdowns, it may have been a total of 12 yards. <laughs> At the one-yard line and two-yard line. Because he was a big athletic guy, and he was a freshman. So it didn't matter where you're from. Keith's Florida. I'm Syracuse, New York, as Coach mentioned. You know, Craig Johnson, Governor. So we had North Country guys, inner city guys, Florida guys, guys from Michigan. Coach Talley's, um, you know, Ivy League background of being a national recruiter, he brought that to the North Country up there at St. Lawrence. So it didn't matter where we were from. didn't matter the color of our skin. Everything, we just got along. You know, we just got along, and it was just a huge brotherhood, and that's what you get with football. You know, that, that's what football does, and, you know, it was just a great experience. I wouldn't trade it for the world. You know, before we got on air tonight, um, Keith was saying, you know, it's too long. We don't, we don't communicate as much as we should, and, you know, I'm as guilty as the next guy about that, you know, and we always say we're busy. I think if one thing that came out of this whole pandemic are calls like this. These Zoom calls uh, that we've all been on since March and 
still doing to this day has uh, reconnected some people, you know, and, and you get an opportunity. I know everyone has FaceTime uh, on their phones. Prior to March, I never used FaceTime. Now I'm comfortable with FaceTime because of calls like this. So um, it, it's just great to, to see Keith and, you know, Coach and I still see each other quite a bit because we're close and we're still down there at Villanova. But, you know, to reconnect and get together and with the guys that we had those awesome experiences with all those years back, like Keith, has been tremendous. And that's what I take out of the whole experience. Yes, the St. Lawrence education. Yes, the friendships that you build throughout all the other students while you're there. Because it's not a huge school, so you do get to know a lot of people. But really, it's the locker room. It's the brotherhood. It's the camaraderie of having teammates like Keith and, and all the other uh, gentlemen we mentioned here today. So that, that's what I got out of it. And what a magical run. I think the, you know, I think we met a gentleman from the 1950 pre, um, undefeated team. We were the, so what's that, 32 years between yeah. the teams at St. Lawrence. So uh, what a magical year. And as everyone said on this call so far today, it, it took a lot of perseverance. It took a lot of luck. It took a lot of grit. And, and whatever it took, we found a way to make it happen, obviously, up until that last Augustana loss, which uh, we, we'll, we'll skip right over that part. <laughs> to remember those things. You know, if we could have tied it up 7-7, I believe, Coach, it was uh, yeah. <laughs> a minute and 50 to go in the game. And uh, if we could have tied it up there, instead of me throwing an interception for a record-setting 92-yard <laughs> interception return for a touchdown and making 14 nothing. Um, you know, we might have gotten to that national championship game against West Georgia, but, you know, things happen and you're down at the time right after that game. It's, it's a bummer. Um, you know, your hearts are broken, but a few weeks later, you reflect on the season you had. And obviously here we are many, many years later and to still reflect on the memories and the, and the great season we had is, uh, truly a testament to all of the members of that team. And obviously, Coach Talley and all the coaches for putting us in position to have that season. Yep. Well, before we uh, before we close things today, we want to bring in one more panelist. Uh, uh, while he uh, can't be on the sidelines at Leckenby Stadium at Leckenby Stadium this season, we're happy to have him with us today. St. Lawrence head football coach Dan Puck Haber. Uh, Puck, uh, we congratulated Coach Talley on his induction to the College Football Hall of Fame earlier. And I know you take a lot of pride in having his legacy and the legacy of the 82 football team be part of your program's history and culture. No, without a doubt, Aaron, and I do appreciate you, you know, putting this together. And, and I appreciate you three guys getting on and, and really talking about one of the most memorable seasons that St. Lawrence football uh, as a program ever had and, and continues to talk about and it continues to be relevant. Um, Coach Talley, I just want to say thank you for uh, everything you do. Uh, not only for the game of football, but for the human race. I mean, you are yeah. an example of a guy who, uh, whatever you touch, it becomes better. And yeah. uh, for me personally, being a cancer uh, patient, or excuse me, being a person with cancer, uh, I will not be defined by my illness uh, with what you do with the bone marrow drives, but also with what you do with football um, and what you still do with football. I know you're still pretty active with Coach Ferrante, just making sure he doesn't screw it up on you. I get it. <laughs> I understand why you stick around. Um, but I, I want to tell a quick story about when I actually first met Coach Talley and Coach Ferrante. I was actually an assist, a young assistant coach for Mike Donnelly at Muhlenberg College. And back in then, it was Coach Talley opened his doors and Coach Ferrante opened his doors. And we got to go down for watch a couple spring practices. We got to talk ball afterwards. Um, and I had no idea that within, I, I guess, 10 years, I was going to be having an opportunity to, to come up to St. Lawrence. And, and after already spending six years as an assistant, be named as the head coach. And um, I look at how Coach Talley treated the people around him and, and treated and had those special relationships that I heard a lot about that 82 game. I heard a lot about that 82 season, not just because, you know, Mike Donnelly uh, was a, an Ithaca coach then, but also because of Dan Elberty was one of the guys that I had a real relationship with in my young playing career. And he spoke 
so highly of what that was like. And, and when he coached a lot of the, the memories and the lessons that he learned on that team, he shared with his players. So I had a young college career for myself. And I was, a. am going to tell you the truth here, guys, like both coach Talley and coach Ryan, I was not a coach's favorite, uh, except on Saturdays, um, Saturday <laughs> night to Thursday, I was a pain in the ass, but, uh, on Saturdays, you could trust me to make the play. Um, and if you can ask Aaron Todd, I'm still kind of that way sometimes in the athletic department. Um, but as we go through this and, and we talk about, you know, how, where life takes you and the different lessons and Keith kind of brought it up, uh, talking about that Wagner game is football is such a great game that you, you learn things about yourself or about what it means to be part of a group that doesn't care that all it's about is the result and getting it. And when you do that and you put your mind at a, you focus on one goal like that, you can do so much in life. Uh, the, it's just kind of human nature. Now, the way I look at this 82 team, to be honest with you guys, that was our four minute mile mark. I'm going to go back and let this uh, for Aaron Todd here as the old runner. It was that Roger Bannister four minute mark. So that when I first came up here in 2010, um, just be an assistant coach and just coach the offensive line and, and you know, live next door to the Hoot Owl, which was phenomenal, by the way. <laughs> um, you knew that if you could do it right, which means you could get the right people involved, you could get the right coaches, you could get the right players, how special football at St. Lawrence could be. And now this is my 11th fall, my fifth as a head coach. Uh, and I look around and I see the different guys that I have on my roster and, and the types of people they are and the types of people that we have in our program and the different coaches that have come through here. I don't think any of that happens without this 82 team really s establishing how good it can be here in Canton, New York. And for that, I just want to say thank you. Uh, it, it's, it's you guys did it. You guys persevered. And I do want to go back to the story about that conversation in late spring before March senior year. Coach, I completely get it. You had no plans of moving him to defense. That's just what Mark needed to hear at that time. <laughs> the sounds of it, he was a guy who took the summers off, right? It was the first summer he worked out. You had to pull the card out of his hand and be like, hey, bud, I know you're talented, but uh, if you don't figure this out, we're moving you to defense. All of a sudden, I'm sure his eyes got big, like, oh, oh, uh oh, oh, uh oh. I know you probably had to use a special card to get him into school and everything. And you were like, I got to get something out of this recruit. I mean, I completely understand where this was going. Um, but no, I, I think it's as we do this and, and do everything, I mean it, guys. Uh, this 82 team, um, from where the program and what you're able to accomplish, and then what you guys have been able to accomplish after in life, it's no surprise at how special that group was. And Coach Talley, I mean, just uh, from myself uh, in this profession, um, which I hope everybody understands that's watching this, as football, college football coaches, we put our career in the hands of 18 to 22-year-old males. We're not real smart people. I mean, that's the most craziest group of people to constantly try to rely on for your career. But when you guys get it right and, and you guys have always done it right, um, it really makes for special times. And, and I just want to say thank you so much. And Coach Talley, thank you for everything that you do. Um, yeah. Because it's, it, it means a lot, not just to me, but other people like myself uh, that uh, you're saving those lives and, and how special that is. Awesome. Hey, Aaron, I want to just say one other thing before we wrap. Thank you to St. Lawrence. Uh, thank you to you. Uh, St. Lawrence is a special place and for St. Lawrence to provide this platform to bring us back uh, that's very very special and um, to Coach T and, and Mark uh, first to you Mark a great great man great family man great um, uh, friend an extraordinary athlete and Coach T thank you for giving me opening the door for giving me this, this kid from Miami Florida an opportunity um, to uh, build a life build a career and just, um, you know, I can't thank you enough for being an extraordinary human being and an extraordinary uh, man and a brilliant coach. So, you know, just hats off to you. Well, speaking of hats, my St. Lawrence University, all the fame hats. <laughs> Tip of the hat to you, Coach. <laughs> Tip of the hat.
Mark, Coach Talley, any closing words before we uh, before we call it a night? Yeah, if I could, uh, if if I could just take a a moment to say that uh, uh, Coach Puck is uh, one of my heroes, and I don't have very many heroes. Um, you know, he's he's had uh, two transplants, uh, marrow transplants, uh, and is fighting cancer on a daily basis. Uh, it is what I do for a living now. I did it when I was head coach at Villanova, you know, back in uh, maybe 22 or 23 years ago. And we've managed to continue it. Mark has helped me out with it a great deal. We have 130 college football teams that do bone marrow drives with me every year. Uh, and uh, Coach Puck put on a drive at St. Lawrence. I think the population there is like 12 or 1300. And he had 300 people donate uh, and, and get on the donor list, which is uh, phenomenal. Most of the teams that do drives with me are 150, uh, 50, 80, 110, but nobody, nobody does 300. And at Tiny St. Lawrence, uh, Coach Puck, uh, you know, hit the Super Bowl of Super Bowls with that one. Uh, so I greatly appreciate it. Um, he is one of my heroes. Um, he is fighting cancer on a daily basis. It's what uh, mm -hmm. I do now. And, um, you know, Mark and Keith and everybody uh, in the past has helped me along with this venture. So uh, I love the fact that we have um, migrated college football, St. Lawrence football and Villanova football uh, into a life-saving kind of a venture. So mm -hmm. you know, that being said, uh, today to be involved with the gentleman uh, on this call is pretty unbelievable for me uh, to be able to go back and reminisce about uh, the greatest season uh, in in small college football, especially at St. Lawrence. Uh, and it is very, very special to still be alive and be a part of all of that. So, um, you know, it's it's been an honor, uh, men, to work with you uh, alongside and I appreciate everything you did for the university for the program and, and most especially uh, for me. Coach can you just give everyone your uh, your website so people know if they want to learn more about your foundation? Yes uh, I'm glad you mentioned that it's tallybonemarrow.org it's t-a-l-l-e-y uh, bonemarrow.org uh, www tallybonemarrow.org. And we have all the information on there. Uh, if anybody is interested in doing a drive with us or uh, getting people involved with our foundation, uh, please, please do. Thanks for that. Thanks for everything you do. Uh, Mark, we'll give sure. you the, the chance to give the last word here. Any, any final thoughts before we say goodbye? Yeah, Aaron, I appreciate you putting this together. It's awesome to see everybody. Coach Puck, great seeing you. Great to see you, bud. Well, uh, Keith, it's been a long time. Let's not have it be so long next yeah. time. And, uh, you know, St. Lawrence, you know, is, is where it all started for me as well. Coach Talley, you know, is my head coach, my mentor, gave me the first opportunity to get into this profession, which we all love. And, um, and you know, my friend, I mean, Coach Talley is the one that, I don't want to say talked me into coaching, but kind of talked to me about what I was going to do post-graduation. And the rest is history. I haven't done anything since then. So, Coach, I thank you for that. Um, Keith, you're phenomenal, not only football player, but individual. Um, you know, the memories that we share and can talk about still today have been awesome. And, yeah. um, you know, Coach Puck to be up there and continuing – the legacy that, you know, St. Lawrence is and always will be. Congrats to you as well. And, you know, we wish you obviously the best, the best of health at all times. And so, Aaron, I'm just thrilled that you gave us this platform and this opportunity not only to, you know, go down memory lane a little bit about the 1982 season, but also, uh, you know, getting the opportunity to reconnect and, and have an opportunity to, to see you, Aaron, and to see you, Coach Puck. I know, most recently, you've probably seen my brother and my niece since she was coaching softball up there. And my brother, Jim, would go up there frequently to see her in the most Absolutely. years. But um, to reconnect with Keith, Keith, it's been great. Let's not have it be so long next time. And uh, That's right. That's right. Coach Talley, thank you, you know, not only for bringing me to St. Lawrence, but also 
all the years and all the history we've had since then. I've known Coach Telly since I was 18 years old. We don't need to say how old we are today, but it's a lot of years. It's a lot of Mere years. Time. <laughs> so go again, say, go say. Aaron, thanks so much for putting this together. Puck, good luck. I know you're uh, trying to navigate through this thing up there at St. Lawrence, just like we are down here at Villanova. Yep. So hopefully we'll all come out on the other side of whatever it is we're dealing with today in our world and in our country, and we'll, be, we'll all be better versions of ourselves because of it. So good luck with everybody. Thanks again for having me on today. And uh, as Keith just said, go Saints. Go Saints. Absolutely. Go Saints. Well, thank you all for joining us today. Like you said, Mark, hopefully next fall we'll have a, a homecoming football game to, to look forward to. Uh, but today it's been so much fun to hear these stories and be part of it. Thank you again for joining us. Um, on behalf of St. Lawrence Athletics, I want to wish all of you a uh, happy virtual Laurentian weekend. Um, I want to thank you, I wanna, and I hope you'll take advantage of all the virtual events happening this weekend. You can learn more at stlawu.edu slash alumni slash Laurentian dash weekend. Thanks for, to our viewers for tuning in. We'll see you again soon. And until then, keep swinging, and here we go, Saints.